uh, for fiscal court meeting of 2019. 2019. It is, uh, it is uh, certainly an honor to be in the position of Pike County Judge Executive. I want to welcome everyone here this morning and everyone here to tune in on the various channels, various press. Uh, always welcome. And uh, to begin with, I would call the meeting to order, but we don't have a gavel. So, uh, with that being said, uh, I would ask that Brother Bob Mullen uh, say the invitation. God of greatest heavenly Father, send your visitors to warn your people for the day of when you have made the day of your people. Father, we ask your blessings be upon each of these gatherings here today. Father, help us to realize that we're servants of the public. Father, in your word, it teaches us there's a time and a season for everything. There's a time to weep, a time to mourn, a time to plant. Time to plant, time to sow, time to sow, time of harvest, time of harvest. Father, there's a time to Father, rejoice. Time to rejoice. Father, we Father, pray, pray that we will always do we will always do that you are the creator, you are the creator, the one that made the heavens and the earth. The heavens and the earth. Father, we pray Father, for the we new administration. For the administration that you will let your light you shine, on the light shine on them, and that they will always and remember always the people remember that, they serve. that they serve. Father, we pray that you'll give them wisdom, give them knowledge, wisdom and knowledge, courage, courage, courage understanding, understanding, and Father, that, and Father, that they will do the right thing. Do the right thing. The Bible teaches us that when the righteous rules, the, righteous the people rules, rejoice. People rejoice. But when the wicked rules, when the wicked rules, people mourn. The people mourn. We pray, Lord. We pray, Lord, because these are all my friends. These are all my friends. We pray, Lord, we that pray, they will Lord, be righteous, they will be righteous and, do and do what is right. And I think that they will. And, think that they will. and Father, myself, and Father, and myself, those that's in the positions that, position that I'm appointed to, I'm appointed to. Let me not forget. Let me not forget. Father, that Father, that I'm here too to I'm serve. Here too to serve. That, that I'll do my job that I'll well. Do my job and well. that we all will let the light shine that's within shine us and in our hearts. And in our hearts. That people can see that and understand that, that we love the Lord. We love the Lord. We love our people. We love our people. Father, I ask a blessing Father, upon all blessing the upon county all employees. County employees. Whatever task that they will do through this team. Father, we pray that you will watch over them and keep them safe. We don't want no one to be hurt or killed. And Father, we need you to protect them day in and day out. And Father, we pray now that you go with us through the remainder of this year meeting and every meeting. And Father, that you always let your light shine down upon us. We thank you for salvation. For salvation. We thank you, Lord. We thank you, Lord. What we feel in our hearts. We feel in our hearts. And we ask it in Jesus' name. In Jesus name. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you, Bob. Thank you. Thank you, Bob. The uh, first item on the yeah, agenda on the is agenda. recognition of the Pike County Clerk, and I would like to uh, ask that uh, uh, Rhonda, uh, please come on up to the podium and address the court. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, everybody. Good morning, everybody. It's good to see some of the older faces that were here before, and it's good to see the new faces. Congratulations to all of you on your new position. On your new position. Um, the first thing that I want to start with is I'm going to decline the position on the fiscal court clerk. Fiscal court clerk. And the reason for that is because I've got my hands pretty full downstairs doing what I do already. So I'd like to read this little I'd like to read this letter that I proposed to the court. To the Pike County, the Pike County Fiscal Court, this letter is to inform the court and its members that I am respectfully declining the position of fiscal court clerk. My job as a county clerk is very demanding. I feel it would better serve the court to designate someone to occupy this position. I know that 
I can't make any appointments or anything like that to fulfill this petition, but I would like to make a recommendation if that's okay. It is my recommendation that this position be filled by Lisa Lip. Lisa has been trained and is already familiar with the duties that are required in this position. She works very well with myself and my staff, and I think that she would continue to be an asset to the fiscal court. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. We appreciate your uh, work appreciate in the clerk's work office work and look forward to working with you over the next four years to move the county forward. You're always welcome here in uh, the fiscal court. Well, I appreciate that very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I was told that was told perhaps that you wanted me to go ahead and submit a budget this morning. Or this morning. Um, you want me to hold off on that? You want me to hold off on that? What's that? What's that? Uh, Ron, this is a special call meeting. It's not on the agenda. So if you'll get with Gene, and we can get that on the agenda tomorrow, tomorrow before we have another special call meeting. Tomorrow, or we can do it on the next, the first regular meeting. Okay, that'd be fine. Would you like to slam your mouth? Either way, we you want to do it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Ron. Based upon the Based uh, clerk's uh, recommendation, uh, recommendation. Uh, it, is uh, recommendation it is my recommendation to appoint Lisa Little, Lisa Little Lisa as clerk of the fiscal court of the fiscal at a 3A payday. Um, um, one of the things I think we one probably, one probably, need, to do probably need to do before, um, before uh, we do this we is we do this is order on, on the agenda around a little bit. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, would uh, you please, I guess you please want the clerk. Um, let's go ahead let's and go ahead. Enter a second on the motion. Second on the motion. Second. Second. Would you please go ahead and call the roll? Please go ahead and call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Taggart? Yes. Commissioner yes. Booth? Yes. Commissioner yes. Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Judge yes. Jones? Yes. And let the record reflect that record Commissioner Tackett made the uh, second on my second motion. On my motion. Slip where's Lisa? Slip where's Lisa? I see her. I see her. Congratulations. Congratulations. The next order of business order is, of business business is a roll call by, uh, by the fiscal by court clerk. The fiscal court clerk. Judge Jones. Judge Here. Here. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Tacky. Here. Commissioner Booth. Commissioner Booth. We have a quorum and we are ready to proceed. And the next item on the agenda is the Pledge of Allegiance. And we will ask uh, the veteran, uh, veteran Justin Maynard to lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Moving on, the next order Moving on, the next order business order. is the appointment of the Pike County, County Deputy County Judge Executive, Executive, Executive Staff and approval of salaries. Approval salaries. I hereby move I hereby that move that Reggie Hickman Reggie be Hickman appointed Deputy, Deputy Judge Executive of the 6A. Vince Ratliff be the former manager uh, with uh, AT&T uh, AT AT will be the only person the added only to the judge's office in an office. executive assistant 5A position. position. He will be tasked to do solid waste and occupational tax enforcement as well as overseeing the new safety program in the county's workforce. I nominate Jeannie Robinson as executive assistant 5A. Uh, Sharon Hall, Administrative Sharon Assistant, Hall, Administrative Assistant, Assistant pay raise, and Anita Haney, Haney is the Secretary of Reception at a 1A pay raise. A 1A pay I move that these, uh, move that these, uh, uh, these are my recommendations and these are my motions. And it's their motion. And is there a second? And is there a second? Second. second. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. Uh, 
Well, uh, that's a big difference between state and city. Difference between state and city. This is going to be a learning experience for me as well. So I would make the motion to hire the uh, 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 those individuals and those those individuals in those positions. Madam Clerk, would you please call Madam Clerk, would you please call her? Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Tackett. Yes. Commissioner Booth. Yes. Commissioner Booth. Yes. Jones. Yes. Yes. Congratulations. Congratulations. Next item on the agenda is the authorization of the continuity of government. Of government. Of government. And I believe and that's in here. I believe that's in here. This is the ordinance this is the that, um, that um, and let me just read this briefly. Let me just read this briefly. Um, um, whereas the Pike County Fiscal Court, Court deems it necessary to provide for the orderly succession of the office of judge executive in the event of the absence or disability of the judge executive, as defined in KRS 67.725, the vacancy of the office of judge executive will be filled in accordance with section 152 of the Kentucky Constitution. Whereas the line of succession contains the ordinances to ensure that the county government officials are able to serve in the absence or disability of the judge executive, deputy judge executive, or any successor. Now, therefore, be it ordained by the fiscal court, Pike County, Commonwealth of Kentucky, Section 1, in the absence or disability, Pike County Judge Executive Grace Jones II shall be serving in the office on the duties and responsibilities of Pike County Judge Executive. These duties shall be administered temporarily by the Deputy Judge Executive Bridget Hicks, set forth in KRS 67.730, 67, 67.35. He shall have the power specified in KRS 39.409. Section 2, if neither the County Judge Executive nor the Deputy Judge Executive is able to serve in the office of judge executive by reason of absence, disability, or vacancy, then the duties of the office of judge executive shall be assumed temporarily by a member of the Pike County Fiscal Court is set forth in KRS 67.740 and KRS 67.745 and he shall have the powers specified in KRS 39.409. Uh, I need a motion need to, a authorize motion to authorize the uh, adoption, the, uh, adoption of the order of, the order of, uh, of uh, continuity for government. Continuity for government. We have a motion by have a Commissioner motion by Robertson. Is there a second? Is there a second? Second. Second. Uh, Madam Clerk, uh, there being a first or second, a motion, motion and a second on the floor. I would floor. ask the clerk to please call the roll. Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Tackett. Yes. Commissioner Booth. Yes. Commissioner Booth. Yes. Jones. Yes. Yes. Next item on the agenda is, is approval for assistant county attorney to county represent the Pike County Fiscal Court and approval of the salary. Approval of the salary. Um, um, it is my motion. It is my motion. I need a motion I need on the motion floor on to appoint floor. Kevin King as assistant county attorney, assistant county attorney, and approval of his salary at six a salary. Six he will basically be filling the position that had been previously occupied by, uh, by uh, Kyle Deskins, who is representing the fiscal representative. Is there a motion? Is there a motion? We have a motion on the floor by motion Commissioner motion Booth. By is there a second? Booth. Is there a second? And we have a second by Commissioner second Robertson. By Commissioner uh, Robertson. Uh, Madam uh, Clerk, would you please Madam call the roll? Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Tackett. Commissioner, Commissioner Booth. Booth. Commissioner Booth. Judge Jones. Judge yes. Jones. Yes. Uh, next item on the agenda next is, the, is uh, the appointment of an emergency management director and approval of salary. Of course, this is a position that is required by statute. And is there a motion on the floor uh, to hire Doug Tackett as emergency management director at a salary of five salary of five motion? We have a motion on the floor by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? Is there a second? We have a second by Commissioner second Robertson. By Commissioner Robertson. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you uh, please Madam call the roll? Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Tackett. Commissioner, Commissioner Booth. Booth. Commissioner Booth. Judge Jones. Yes. Yes. Um, the next uh, item on the list on, on the agenda is, on is approval of sureties for elected officials. Um, elected officials. Um, um, is there a motion to approve the sureties on the bonds? bonds? And first of all, so we need to ask all, the county treasurer to, uh, to read the list, please. Uh, read the list, please. 
the public official bonds for the, uh, the elected officials that have been, been obtained. Been obtained. Uh, We've uh, obtained two uh, revenue uh, bonds two that revenue are required, bonds that one for the clerk, the, clerk, the county clerk, the and one for the sheriff in an amount of $100,000. All the other public official bonds are $10,000, and that would be for the judge. It would be for the jailer. The six deputy the coroners, six deputy the coroner, the coroner, the three constables, the three constables, and that's it, and that's it. Uh, and those uh, uh, bonds those are in place, and we'll pay those place, later on this month. Later on uh, this month. Uh, uh, I've got all the bonds signed bond except signed for the deputy coroner, and, and once I get those in place, I'll file them in the clerk's office. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you very much. And, uh, and uh, I would request, is there a motion on the floor to approve the sureties for elected officials' bonds? We have a motion by Commissioner, have a motion by Commissioner Robertson. Is there a second? Is there a second? I'll second. I'll second. Madam Clerk, we have a motion on the second on the, second on the, the approval of sureties for elected officials' bonds. Would you please call the roll? Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Robertson, Commissioner Robertson, Commissioner Tackett, Commissioner, Tackett. Commissioner Booth, Commissioner Booth. Judge, Jones. Yes. Judge Jones. Yes. The next item on the agenda the is the acknowledgement uh, in receipt uh, of the Pike County Sheriff's 2019 budget. And I would ask Sheriff Scott to come to the post and, and address the court. Good morning, Judge. Good morning, Judge. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, I know this is a special call oh, meeting, but call I'm going to be on the I'm going to be out, the, out of town for the next few days, next few and days. I just need to, to want to go ahead and get my budget. My budget has to be in by the 15th of January, and uh, I just need to go ahead and get it turned in. Get it turned in. Uh, Sheriff, first of all, let me Sheriff, welcome, welcome you to the fiscal court. I want to court. just begin by saying uh, that uh, uh, you've done an excellent uh, job. Excellent job. You've been put in a pretty awkward in position, in position, not, not having uh, not the resources uh, at your office. Resources We're going to try to make sure that we do everything we can to help the sheriff's office, to make sure you have equipment and the staff that you need. You've done a great job implementing the deputies in these high schools. Uh, I think that's something that is I very important, that's very important, 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 important in a lot of the situations we've seen occur around the country. Um, um, just to bring this to the court's attention, this, court's attention uh, this, uh, this uh, budget, uh, request budget request carries forward, carries forward the same, uh, same uh, supplement by the fiscal court of $300,000. It, uh, it, it also, uh, it in, also uh, come to my attention that the sheriff's collections have exceeded, uh, exceeded, uh, have exceeded uh, the revenue uh, that had been anticipated. Uh, been anticipated. And I believe that I believe what we're going to do, Sheriff, we're going to be my motion to acknowledge the budget, acknowledge the budget uh, with the $300,000 supplement and authorize, authorize that. If there's any if additional there's fees any recovered that would otherwise come back to the court, uh, it uh, would be uh, my uh, position that when that happens, that we would again turn, turn, turn that back over to you. I know the need you have in terms of vehicles and so forth. So whatever you're going to get over and above $300,000 reimbursed from the state, it would be my position, it would be my position, position would likely uh, uh, take the position that we will allow the sheriff's office to keep that work that needs to be done. Um, with, that said, uh, with that being said, is there a, is uh, there a, motion, there a motion, motion to acknowledge the, motion to acknowledge the, the Pike, Pike County Sheriff's 2019 Sheriff's budget, uh, budget. Uh, and also with the understanding that anything over and above 300000 the sheriff will be able to retain that? Motion. Motion. Is there a, we have a motion yes, by motion Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second? Tackett, is there a second? We have a motion have and a second motion on the second acknowledgement of the receipt of the Pike County Sheriff's 2019 budget. Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Tackett. Commissioner, Robertson, Commissioner, Tackett, Commissioner Booth. Commissioner, Commissioner Booth. Judge Jones. Yes. Judge Jones. Thank you, Sheriff. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Thank you, Judge. Sheriff, we would like to have you, uh, like to have you uh, come uh, periodically come before the court and just update us on the progress the sheriff's office is making. Again, uh, same thing with the clerk. You're always welcome here. We appreciate the work you're doing on behalf of the county. Thank you.
next item on the next item agenda, agenda is we have some uh, personnel matters and also matters and also uh, a matter of litigation that needs to be addressed. Needs to be and with that being said, uh, that being said uh, I would move, I would move that we adjourn that we into a, a, a recess a into a executive session. And I would ask that the assistant county attorney assistant please county read attorney please the uh, KRS, KRS related KRS to this issue. Related to Judge KRS on this issue, 61.810, addresses the exceptions to the open meeting law. Subsection C subsection of the proposed litigation. Subsection S is discussed in specific personnel matters. Do I have a motion to recess into executive session? Executive session. Do we need a motion on that? We need a motion on that. We need a motion. Commissioner Booth has made a motion to enter into executive session. Is there a second? Is there a second? And we have a second by Commissioner Robertson Hall in Robertson favor. Hall in favor. Uh, uh, Madam Clerk, please, please call the roll. Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Robertson. Commissioner Tackett. Commissioner Tackett. Commissioner Booth. Commissioner Booth. Judge Jones. Yes. Judge Jones. Yes. So we will stand in recess for the second session and we'll uh, announce uh, when we have completed those matters. Completed those matters. We are back in, and as soon as I find my agenda, we will get started on this. I have a motion that we uh, adjourn from uh, executive session back into regular session. I would ask that the uh, assistant county attorney uh, read the law on that, and if there's a motion, uh, thereafter to uh, exit uh, special, or I'm sorry, executive session. We discussed some pending litigations, personnel issues, and now we need to come out of executive session. All right. Is there a motion? Motion. We have a motion by Commissioner Tackett. Is there a second to exit? And we have a second by Commissioner Booth. Uh, all in favor say aye, and the clerk please report. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Um, in just a second, I'm gonna have um, the uh, county's personnel director uh, Justin Maynard, uh, read my recommendations to the uh, members of the court and the public. And I want to just take a few minutes to discuss where we are. Throughout the course of the campaign, and, and, and the, this court is coming in, this is the first day, and obviously uh, I've got a lot to learn about conducting court meetings as after having spent 18 years in the state senate, it's a little bit different. Um, we have some serious financial problems and the prior administration has made statements that they're leaving us in great financial condition this past week alone uh, we have had information come to us that is is somewhat alarming the, the uh, herald leader reported a story where commissioner mullins was interviewed and express the fact that we need about $11 million or thereabout over the next four years in solid waste alone, five and a half to six million to construct uh, either phase six of the landfill or to put toward a new landfill. The prior administrations who uh, have ran this county did not escrow a single penny of money for that purpose. We know that the county needs about $4 million in equipment we have some aging equipment in solid waste that needs to be replaced. There's been no money set aside for that. We also uh, have some citations that the state has issued against the, the county. The folks out there in the county may not be aware of that. I think it's six pending citations that have been issued because of environmental issues at the landfill. As part of the remediation, the county is going to be required to deal three, drill th three water wells in the landfill to help get some of the water out. The cost to do that will be between two and three hundred thousand uh, dollars, depending on what they see uh, in terms of some of these issues at the landfill. 
we may have to drill up to an additional nine wells. The total cost is somewhere around 800,000, maybe upwards of a million dollars. There's no money set aside for that. The court, uh, the previous court talked about a carry forward. The court uh, budgeted a $1.7 million carry forward. But the problem is the coal severance tax is 700 on pace to be $725,000 in this fiscal year below what was budgeted. So that takes your carry forward or this so-called carry forward down to a million dollars. The fiscal court did not take the compensating rate this year. That cost the county about $176,000 below what was budgeted. So you're down to roughly 800,000. And in order to secure the lease with uh, worldwide equipment on the Mack truck program, the leasing program that the county has actually made money on uh, over the last four years, the county had to put down 291,000. I think I made the mistake in the newspaper and said 294,000. It was 291,000 as a down payment as a result of the fact that the county lost its credit rating. Now I want to go back in May of last year, or, uh, the S&P rating uh, organization, the, the financial rating organization, downgraded Pike County's credit rating from an A plus to a BB rating. And any time your credit rating is downgraded, it's the same as having your credit score go down as an individual when you need to go out and borrow money for a, a car or finance or try to get a mortgage on a house. The county's credit rating was downgraded because of a bad audit from the 2016 fiscal year. And we've talked about the newspapers report about all the problems in the treasurer's office. Well, in March of last year, the audit for the 2018, I'm sorry, the 2017 fiscal year came out and those problems continued. And as a result, S&P revoked the county's credit rating. Now, that basically means that the county has no ability to bond any kind of project, whether it's an economic development project, whether it's equipment. So instead of an individual maybe needing a new truck, new work vehicle, they can go out and borrow the money and finance it. If the county has to do anything now, the county's going to have to pay for it as it goes, by and large. The problem with that is the county's uh, revenue stream is shrinking. We also had another hit to the budget. Uh, this past week or two weeks ago, the treasurer's office received a notification from the county employee retirement system that the pension contribution will go up 12% above what the pension obligation was last year. That's going to be more than 203000 in additional money. So from the current budget that we're in, we're looking at cuts of a million to a million three depending on how much the coal severance tax continues to decline over the next fiscal year. Now, the prior administrations had no control over the fact that coal severance tax was declining. That was beyond the control of, 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 of any governmental entity. There were a lot of market factors that took place, price of natural gas. But what was foreseeable is the impact that those reductions in severance tax would have on the county's budget. That is something that should have been planned for, and it was not. A county that has received as much coal severance tax as Pike County has should have a rainy day fund in the millions of dollars. But in fact, when I met with the county treasurer right before assuming office after the December 27th paychecks were issued, the Pike County Fiscal Court only had $100,000 in the bank. 50,000 in the road fund, 50,000 in the general fund, is that correct? So when you think about the fact that a county the size of Pike County with 180 employees and the financial obligations that we have to provide road service for more than 1,000 miles of county roads, garbage service for somewhere probably near uh, 50,000 when you take out the county's uh, resident or the city's residents, having to run the landfill to service all of Pike County, that's not a lot of financial security. The county did receive the property tax collection uh, of about 2.1 million, I believe it was, um, this week. 
So that's how much the money, the county's got about 2.2 .2 million in the bank. Now that sounds like a lot of money until you factor in that the county's payroll and fringe benefits are more than a million dollars a month. Right now, the county's uh, budgeted, the anticipated payroll and fringe benefits for the county is $12,380,000. We know that the pension is going to go up by more than 203000 So you're looking at $12.6 million in the next fiscal year for payroll and benefits alone. And when you factor out the pass-through money, you're getting well over 40% of the county's budget for payroll and fringe benefits. There's no choice that we're going to have to make some hard, we're going to have to make some very hard decisions in the next month. And I want to lay the groundwork for that. We're going to have the treasurer's reconciliation uh, here in a week or two that will tell us through the first six months of the fiscal year where the county stands. And what that will do is it will take the revenue side of the budget and it will look to see where the county is in terms of what was budgeted versus what's been received. So we'll be able to see if the collections are below what was budgeted or above what was budgeted. We'll also be able to take the appropriation side of the budget because we have no choice but to pass a balanced budget. The revenue has to equal the, the expenditures. On the expenditure side, we'll know whether we're over budget or under budget in each of the line items. For instance, the county's road maintenance garage was uh, at 50% of its budget at the end of November. So that basically means if that continues, the entire budget item for the road maintenance garage will be expended uh, at the end of April. So that would leave you two months in that fiscal year, in the fiscal year with no money for that line item. So essentially, and I'll explain this, uh, I'm going to go ahead and ask the personnel director to read the hiring recommendations. And um, there is one clarification on the county purchasing director. Yeah, I got you. So um, I would ask that the county's personnel director, Justin Mayer, go ahead and read my recommendations in terms of hiring for the uh, upcoming term of the Pike Fiscal Court. Gentlemen, the following items are up for approval. Uh, keep in mind all pay rates include any accrued longevity. At the airport, uh, Matthew Ray as manager at a 5-H rate of pay. Jeffrey Lee as a lineman at a 4-H rate of pay. Chad Conway as lineman at a 2-H rate of pay. In finance, Pamela Vanover as a supervisor at a 5-A rate of pay. Justin Maynard as personnel manager at a 4A rate of pay. Jennifer Lewis as treasurer assistant at a 3A rate of pay. Penny Burke as a data manager at a 3A rate of pay. In GIS mapping, Charles Maynard as a GIS assistant at a 3A rate of pay. In emergency management, Martha Howe as an EMA secretary at a 2A rate of pay. At the maintenance garage, Jeff Justice as foreman at a 5A rate of pay. Chester Atkins as a welder at a 5H rate of pay. Dwayne Witt as a welder at a 5H rate of pay. James Thompson as a mechanic at a 5H rate of pay. Ricky Blankenship as a mechanic at a 5H rate of pay. Roger Justice Jr. as a mechanic at a 5H rate of pay. Roger Anderson as a mechanic at a 5H rate of pay. Stephen Blackburn as a mechanic at a 5-H rate of pay, and Tracy Lyons as a mechanic helper at a 4-H rate of pay. In purchasing, uh, Greg Fannin as a purchasing agent at a 5-A rate of pay. At the Judicial Center, Jeremy Miller as a facility tech at $18.20 an hour. Jessica Epling as head housekeeper at a 1-A rate of pay. Christopher Dotson as a custodian at a 2-H rate of pay. Glenna Robinson as a custodian as a, at a 2-H rate of pay. Ramona Horn as a custodian at a 2-H rate of pay. And John Murphy as a custodian at a 2-H rate of pay. For the floodplain coordinator, Jimmy Kaiser as the floodplain coordinator at a 5-A rate of pay. 
the animal shelter, Lori Ann Goff as director at a 2A rate of pay, Jason Burke as a helper at 3H rate of pay, Daryl Mullins as a helper at a 3H rate of pay, Tanya Abshire as a helper at 2H rate of pay, Elizabeth Lell as a helper at a 2H rate of pay. In maintenance and grounds, Ronnie Dotson as a light equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay, Kenneth Price as a mower slash carpenter helper at a 3H rate of pay, Randy Mullins as a community coordinator, a community center coordinator at a 2H rate of pay. In construction and maintenance, Paul Wimpson as a supervisor at a 5A rate of pay, Alfred Krieger as a carpenter at a 5H rate of pay, Charles Lockard as a carpenter at a 5H rate of pay, Michael Irwin as a carpenter at a 5H rate of pay, Terry Justice as a carpenter at a 5H rate of pay. In custodians, uh, Connie Martin as a head housekeeper at a 2A rate of pay, Connie Chapman as a custodian at a 1A rate of pay, Cody Young as a custodian at a 2H rate of pay, Anthony Conrad as a custodian at a 2H rate of pay. In the road office, Colleen Chaney as office manager at a 3A rate of pay. On road lot one, Isaac Sanders as a temporary road foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Christopher Epling as a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Plenty May as a light equipment operator at a 4H rate of pay. James Morley as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Johnny Atkins as a mower slash driver at a 3H rate of pay. William Dotson III as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Road lot two, Noah Case Jr. as a temporary road foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Paul Atkins as a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Corbett Newsom as a light equipment operator at a 4H rate of pay. Pebble Roberts as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Steve Burke as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. William Tackett as a mower slash driver at a 3H rate of pay. Road lot three is Gary France as a temporary road foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Danny Taylor is a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. John Thompson is a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Clay Thacker is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Gregory Phipps as a weed mower at a 3H rate of pay. Jeff Varney as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. On road lot four, uh, Ralph Blankenship is a foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Delmer Cheney is a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Donald Thacker is a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Homer Tackett is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. James Taylor is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Thomas Thacker is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. For road lot five, James Dotson is a temporary road foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Christopher Stump is a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Flannery Blankenship is a light equipment operator at a 4H rate of pay. Christopher Casey is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Tony Dotson is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. And Kevin Wolford is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Road lot six is Daniel Branham as a foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Brandon Mullins is a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. James Webb is a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Robert Booth is a light equipment operator at a 4H rate of pay. Matthew Yates is a truck driver at a 3H rate of pay. Timothy Williamson is a mower slash driver at a 3H rate of pay. On the road special crew, it will be Robbie Ratliff as a heavy equipment operator at a 5H rate of pay. Social services is Diane Thacker as a supervisor at a 5A rate of pay. Solid waste area one is John Reed as a foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Kevin Tackett as a cashier at a 2A rate of pay. Brian Daniels as a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Christopher Anderson as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Jacoby Sloan as a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. James Sloan is a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. John Ellswick is a packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Kevin Witt is a packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Melissa Prater is monitor at 3H rate of pay. Melvin McCoy Jr. is a packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. 
Michael Thacker as a Packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Stephen Cool as a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Bradley McCoy as a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Jordan Hurley as a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Lawrence Wilkerson as a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Mark Thacker as a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Solid Waste Area 2 is Harold Fraley as a foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Brody Taylor is a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Dalton Pig is a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. John Thompson Jr. is a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Lisa Atkins is a monitor at a 3H rate of pay. Joseph Reed is a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Austin Atkins is a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Devin Farron is a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Solid Waste Area 3, uh, Dino France is foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Anthony Roberts is a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Bradley Brennan as a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Jeffrey Tackett as a packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Scotty Nunemaker is a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Steve Dameron as a packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Solid Waste Area 5 is Timmy Crawford as a foreman at a 4A rate of pay. Clyde Witt as a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Gregory Blankenship as a packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Kenneth Stanley as a packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Jacob Dotson as a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Patrick Daniels as a mini packer driver at a 3H rate of pay. Pamela Robinson as a monitor at a 3H rate of pay. James Lester as a loader at a 2H rate of pay. Wesley Williams as a loader at a 2H rate of pay. In the solid waste office, Bobby Mullins as a supervisor at a 5A rate of pay. Stephanie Clevenger as an office manager at a rate of 43,000 a year. Charles Morley as a supervisor at a 3A rate of pay. Gregory Blankenship as an administrative assistant at a 2A rate of pay. Stephen Asbury as a monitor at a 3H rate of pay. Brianna Williams as a cashier at a 3H rate of pay. In solid waste cleanup, Jimmy Sanders as pride director at a 4A rate of pay. Bruce Anderson as a driver at a 2A rate of pay. Thomas Green as a boom truck operator at a 4H rate of pay. The solid waste landfill, Larry Hensley as landfill manager at a 4A rate of pay. Jennifer West as a scale operator at a 3A rate of pay. Adam Runyon as a float man at a 3H rate of pay. Jeffrey Stanley as a truck driver at a 3H rate of pay. Kirby Vanover as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Richard Robinette as a general laborer at a 2H rate of pay. In the solid waste transfer, Jonathan Williamson as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. Richard Mullins as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. And Timmy Orris as a driver at a 3H rate of pay. In the occupational tax office, Jeff Coleman as an enforcement officer at a $45,000 a year salary. Donetta Rutherford as a data manager at a 3A rate of pay. In the 911 office, uh, Charles Childers as an assistant at a 5H rate of pay. Can, uh, there were two that apparently I didn't transcribe when I was making my list, but uh, under public works maintenance and grounds, uh, Ethan Willis and John Willis are uh, night watchmen at the Majestic School. You want uh, me to address that briefly? We have uh, tomorrow on the agenda, we will be addressing the issue of the Majestic Knox Creek School. Uh, this is something I've discussed publicly before. Uh, not sure how long ago, but the fiscal court acquired the Majestic Knox Creek School for $10,000 from the Pike County Board of Education. A substantial amount of money has been spent on that building. Uh, the county has no benefit, uh, no use for the building. Is that correct, Paul? Uh, the jails looked at options for it. The health department declined taking it over. The county's spending about seventy to eighty thousand a year to keep it open or to keep it just sitting there. Um, and you're paying two night watchmen twelve hours a day. 
uh, when you factor in the retirement benefit, it's costing the county $120 a day just to have somebody sit and watch an empty building. They're paying about $600 a month for keeping this sewage treatment center running. And Paul, if I say something incorrect, you can jump in here. Um, they're spending between two and three hundred dollars a month on a water bill for a building that shouldn't have any water consumption at all. Okay, so the water's now been cut off. And Paul, how much are the power bills running a month there? Last month it was nineteen hundred dollars. Okay. The month before was seventeen hundred. So you're paying, you know, you're, you're spending thousands of dollars a month to keep a building just sitting there, and. We're going to declare that surplus, but the reason I mention that now is that uh, Mr. Willis and Mr. Willis are the night watchmen, and we're going to allow them, this budget, this recommendation, will remove from the county payroll all part-time workers. Uh, we're rehiring all full-time workers, except for there will be an issue we'll dis discuss a in a moment about a uh, worker who's been off on workers' compensation for about a year and a half who has exceeded the administrative code time limit uh, for employment. We're going to take that up and we're going to also address the another full-time position that was hired at the request of former uh, Deputy Judge Executive Herbie Deskins under the uh, auspices of being able to get 94 percent of the salary reimbursed from a job training program that didn't materialize but in essence all full-time employees have been rehired with those two exceptions i'll address the only part-time that we're keeping on is one i believe one road crew member who's actually working on an emergency as we speak and the uh the two night watchmen and as soon as that property, we want to make sure that the property is not vandalized between now and the time that it's sold so that the county can get the most money as possible out of that uh, property when it's auctioned. And when that property is, uh, is no longer uh, owned by the county, as soon as it's transferred to the new uh, owner when it's auctioned, those two gentlemen will come off the county payroll. So that'll save the county approximately $120 a day, $125 a day when you factor in the uh, retirement contribution. Just so everyone understands, even when you have part-time employees, uh, part-time employees still, even though they may not be entitled to health benefits, the county still has to pay the pension contribution. So whatever a part-time worker is being paid, you can add almost 24 point it's roughly almost 25% uh, onto that because of the pension contribution. So uh, those are my recommendations. Judge, before you ask for a vote on that, please withdraw Wesley Williams. Okay. Where is he on here, Justin? He's in Solid Waste Area 5. What, what did we do on that one? Let me find it here. I read his name off. His name should have not been read off. Okay. Okay. So the other uh, modification would be from the list is that we would strike Wesley Williams, who is also a part-time employee. Correct. Okay. And then add uh, Jonathan, what was the names? Ethan and John Willis. It would be a OA rate of pay at $8.40 an hour for each one. All right. So with those two modifications, with leaving Ethan Willis and John Willis on the uh, employee summary listing at a rate of $8.40, those two, as we said, will come off as soon as that property, uh, those positions will be terminated as soon as the Majestic Knox Creek School property is sold. And also the mistake that was that uh, another Wesley D. Williams, a 2-H part-time loader, will also be removed from the list. Uh, those are my recommendations, and that is my motion. Is there a second on the motion? We have a second by Commissioner uh, Robertson. Uh, before we take a vote on this, would any of the commissioners like to comment? Uh, 
Uh, we have a motion and a second on approval of the employee summary list as uh, with the modifications that we've made. Uh, Madam Clerk, would you please call the roll? Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Two other issues um, I just want to briefly address. We also have on the list, um, and, and Frankie, the gentleman who's been on workers' comp, do we need to discuss that? And is that a separate motion on the personnel? I don't think you do because you never read his name to be rehired. I mean, you can discuss why, but... Uh, well, I think I've, I briefly touched on those right. two issues, but... Yeah. All right, we'll move along. The next item on the agenda is um, approval of a uh, motion to establish a schedule for the regular meetings of the Pike Fiscal Court for the 2019 to uh, 2023 term of the Pike County Fiscal Court. It is my motion that the regular meetings of the Pike County Fiscal Court will be on the first Tuesday of every month at 5.30 p.m. and the third Tuesday of every month at 10 a.m. Is there a motion? I'll ask somebody, is there, is there a motion from someone else? All right. Uh, we have a motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? We have a second by Commissioner Tackett. And uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. And just briefly on that, um, by statute, the county judge can uh, issue an order setting that, but we had just decided that we were going to let the, the court decide when those would be uh, regular meetings. We anticipate that there will be a series of special called meetings over the next three or four weeks around the county. Uh, in various county uh, uh, facilities to address some of the budget problems that we're going to have to deal with. Um, so that will be issued to the media hopefully by the end of the week. Uh, the next thing on the agenda is um, the approval uh, or the establishment of the operating hours of the Pike County Courthouses. And it is my suggestion that we establish an 8.30 a.m. to 5 p.m. operating schedule for both the Pike County, uh, the main courthouse and the Belfry Courthouse, as well as the Phelps Courthouse, and that the work hours for uh, all the other lots be also established. Uh, well, let me just say, let's just, the courthouses will be 8.30 to 5. We'll also be addressing the road lots and solid waste start time probably at the next meeting. Uh, those are my suggestions. Is there a motion? We have a motion by Commissioner Booth. Is there a second? I second. A second by Commissioner Robertson. Uh, Madam Clerk, please call the roll. Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Yes. Judge Jones? Yes. Next item on the agenda is treasurer's business. Uh, does the treasurer have any? Thank you. Um, next item is the Pike County Judge Executive's comments. Uh, I think we've addressed most of the issues. We'll have another uh, special call meeting tomorrow evening. And that leaves us to the last item on the agenda. Uh, given that this is our first, uh, first time I've ever prepared a special uh, uh, meeting agenda, we actually forgot to put the commissioner's comments on. Uh, I think that was an oversight, um, but uh, since that is actually not a, uh, if you don't have anything to say, uh, any comments today? I'd just like to thank the people of Pike County for giving me, giving us a chance to try to make a difference in this county. I just want to thank them. Anybody else? No, I just I just want to thank everybody that's here today and all, and, and we look forward to getting started. I know it's going to be a tough road ahead, but we'll just do the very best we can do for the citizens of the county. Uh, 
before I make a motion for adjournment, uh, I think I think uh, Commissioner Roberts is right. This is this is there are some serious problems facing the county. Uh, we want to make sure that the public is aware of what's taking place. We want to be as transparent and open as possible. Again, we appreciate all the members of the media for being here. If there's any questions, we'd be happy to try to answer those at the appropriate time. Um, that's why we also want to make people aware that we're going to be having the special meetings and we'll try to get that schedule out as soon as possible and enough, uh, with enough advance notice that people will know when those meetings are going to be. And uh, it's been an honor to be elected as state senator for 18 years and I look forward to the challenge of being county judge executive. I want to also thank everyone uh, who all the county employees who are here and the county workers who have worked so hard to help make this transition as smooth as possible. Jeannie has been absolutely fantastic. Frankie, Lisa, Justin, uh, all the current commissioners, uh, thank you all for the work that you've done on behalf of the county. Uh, again, there's going to be a lot of hard decisions that we have to make. We need your prayers. We also ask for your input. If any member of the community has a suggestion or a comment on an issue, it's always welcome whether you contact us by Facebook. The office number to the county judge executive's office is 432-6247. It's the easiest way to reach us. The county, we're going to have a phone for uh, the county commissioners that will, will come into the courthouse. It'll be a line we already have, so there's no cost to the taxpayer there. I think that number is 432-6230. So if you'll give us some time to move some staff over there, if you need to speak to Commissioner Tackett, Commissioner Booth, or Commissioner Robertson, 432-6230. Uh, if you need them, uh, you can leave a message there. We'll make sure that they get it. And uh, again, 432-6247 is the county judge's office if you have any questions or, or comments. Uh, with that being said, do I have a motion for adjournment of this special meeting of the Pike County Fiscal Court? Is there a second? Uh, Madam Clerk, we have a motion by Commissioner Tackett and a second uh, by Commissioner Booth. Would you please call the roll? Commissioner Robertson? Yes. Commissioner Tackett? Yes. Commissioner Booth? Judge Jones. Yes.